Our third historic speaker is Maria Claire Bingamer, professor and dean of, at the Center for Theology and Human Sciences at the Pontifical Catholic University in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. With a doctorate in theology, she serves in it as an advisor to the Progressive Brazilian Catholic Bishops Conference on issues of justice for women. Her 1990 text, Women in the Future of Theology of Liberation, she argued for the value of recovering the history of Christianity from a women's point of view, bringing to light the women depicted in the Bible as building the history of salvation. Reading an excerpt from this text is Annie Rodriguez. With a master's in education from Cambridge College, Ms. Rodriguez specializes in organization development, social justice, and anti-racism education and training, and is a community organizer. Her work focuses on racial ethnic identity development and empowerment, anti-oppressive, equitable organizational transformation, and building authentic personal community relationships. Annie is a founding member of the Undoing Racism Organizing Committee of Western Mass. She served as the chair to the Duval County Health Department Hispanic Health Council and served as the fourth vice president of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference of Jacksonville, Florida. She is also the proud mother of three daughters and grandmother of five beautiful grandchildren. Ladies and gentlemen, Annie Rodriguez. Women's entry into the domain of theology brings with it a new way, a new method of conceiving and expressing a 2,000-year-old theology. Their present eruption into the rational male theological world of the past is as disconcerting and new as that of the woman who, with her presence and her perfume in John's Gospel, invaded the meal taking place within the very strict social and ritual norms of Judaism. Breaching expectations and regulations following the impulse of the desire that overflowed from her here, the woman filled the space with a new scent, which none could avoid breathing in. The presence of women in theology brings with it the same air of the new and unexpected. The present theological field is made up of this plurality of sense, sometimes apparently incompatible, incompatible and often in conflict. Women and the poor in Latin America re rediscovered the Bible at the same time. Women were present when the poor who had been out of the way, outside of the word of God, discovered once again the book that was theirs, the book that spoke of their struggles, their hopes, their desires and their covenant of love with the compassionate and loving God. Jesus' treatment of women as described by the Gospels proclaimed to them the good news about a reign of the disciples of equals. On the other hand, in their reading of the Bible, they came up against the problem of the clear marginalization of women in previous passages of scripture in both Old and New Testament. This drew the attention of women who were becoming aware of their situation, particularly women theologians specializing in the Holy Scripture. The word of this new biblical scholars revealed something new. There is, there is a difference between reading the Bible from the point of view of the poor and reading from a women's point of view. Whereas a poor man may find himself affirmed and defended by the word of the living, God throughout the Holy Scriptures, the poor woman, in contrast, does, that know, does not know as a woman how to heal with the text that seem to marginalize her and treat her as an inferior human being. The problem is all the greater in that the poor communities where the explosion of biblical re renewal is taking place are particularly marked by patriarchal and male supremacist ideologies. In this context, reading biblical texts that seem to reaffirm female segregation may help to confirm women still further in the oppression that crushes them, and this time with the very authority of the Word of God. Because of this, Latin American women biblical scholars are working particularly with women from poor communities for a deeper understanding of the nature of biblical texts. They present the text as the testimony of a people, 
a faith community within the divine revelation is transmitted as a saving word that always supports the lowest and the oppressed people, including women. In addition, they are attempting to recover origins of Christianity from a women's perspective. In doing so, they bring to light and emphasize the women who appear as builders of the history of salvation. A traditional interpretation often forgets, forgets them or relegates them to a secondary plan. Examples are the Egyptian midwives of Exodus 1, the subversive, subversive Tamar, and Agar, who felt completely free to question the Jewish law, and the whole legion of women in the Gospels and Acts of the Apostles who played an active part in the early stages of the church. Thank you.